Visual effects can be kind of crazy. It's really easy to get bogged down with all of the crazy stuff that you need to do, even for just one shot. So I want to show you a simple workflow for kind of keeping yourself organized, working efficiently when it comes to visual effects in Fusion. Okay, so here I have a shot of this lovely young lady. And let's say we want to change her eyes. We want them to be kind of glowing green. There are a bunch of different ways to do that. The first thing let's do is make a slap comp. Now, a slap comp is just a really basic kind of crappy version of this effect so that everybody who watches it can understand that that's what you want. This is kind of one of those fail fast sort of things. So what we want to do is make her eyes glow green. Let's think about a way to do that. One thing that we could do is put maybe just a green color over her eyes and kind of blend it in. We could also just mask a color corrector and kind of just push that green. Let's try the color corrector way. So we'll just throw this color corrector in between the media in and media out. And I'm going to do just a basic mask on one of her eyes here. And we'll just see how this works. So we'll kind of make this basically the shape of her eye. And I'll copy and paste this ellipse so that we have both of the eyes here. And let's just see what we can do with this color corrector. Maybe we'll go over to tint and switch this to fast just because it tends to tint things stronger that way. And I'll just push this towards green. Now we have that kind of green glow. Now let's just kind of soften these a little bit. All right, great. So now we have these kind of glowing green eyes and that's that looks pretty good. So I think maybe we'll just call that good for our slap comp. We have the basic idea of what's happening. It's not refined. It kind of looks bad. We didn't even track this, but you get the idea. You get what's sort of happening here, right? So you could throw this in your edit and people would kind of understand what's going on. That's step one. Next, once you're happy with the slap comp, you kind of move on to the big things. So obviously one of the big things is that these aren't tracked. So we want to deal with that. So we'll just go ahead and grab a tracker here and I'll just track her eye like this. And we'll just track this forward from the current frame, go back to that original frame and track it backward. So now we have one eye tracked and we'll just go ahead and connect this left ellipse to that track by going to the center, right clicking and saying connect to tracker one path position. And that will snap that into the position and that'll work just fine for what we're doing. Let's do that again with another tracker, tracker two, and we'll track this eye as well. Track that forward, track it backward. And now we'll connect this one, connect to tracker two path position. And now we have the eyes tracked. So those are the big things. And if there are, you know, a lot more obvious problems or whatever, if there's something big kind of going in front of our eyes or something like that, we'd want to do some kind of roto or, you know, sell this effect a little better. But those are kind of the major big things, right? If we left it like this, it doesn't look amazing because we can still see kind of the glow here but you know but if we were doing an effect for like sci-fi channel i would say this is you know maybe passable after we kind of get the big things in there let's just take a second and get organized so one thing that i like to do is make sure that my nodes are kind of lined up and they're sort of grouped together not too bad for something simple like this but if you have a little more complicated thing it's pretty important i like to rename my nodes it just takes a second and it helps a lot down the line so we'll call this mask screen right mask screen left this will be green glow underscore CC for a color corrector. This is tracker screen right, tracker screen left, and we have our media in and media out. So rename everything. The other thing I like to do is add an underlay. So you can select a group of nodes like this and hit shift spacebar. That will bring up your select tool panel here. And you can search for any node. The one I'm going to search for is underlay, U-N-D, and hit add. And that will add just this little box around these nodes so that we can kind of label it and stay organized. I can double click off of this to disconnect it, hold down alt and click on this underlay so I can move it by itself. Because if I don't do that and I could just grab this underlay, it'll move everything, right? But I hold alt and click on this to move it by itself. And then I can hit F2 to rename it. So we'll call this I glow. And I also like to set the color to something that's representative on screen. So this is kind of a green glow. That totally makes sense to me, okay? We could also do something like put an underlay under these trackers and we'll just call this trackers. All right, we'll just position this to make sense. So we're staying organized, feeling good. At this point, let's watch this back and see if there's any problems. I don't see any major problems with the tracks. Those seem like they're locked on pretty well. The only problem I see here is we have our glow going over her eyelids, which we need to fix that. So at this point, we're kind of working on the smaller things. This can be the little details in the shot that aren't, you know, I mean, you could argue that this is essential because I mean, it is kind of big for this shot, but generally you'd move to the smaller stuff after you have it, you know, 80% there, right? So we'll just call this a small thing, even though you might argue it's kind of a bigger thing. Either way, you move from big problems to small problems. So the smaller problem is 
we have to kind of cut this glow off. So one thing that we can do is combine these masks. And so I'll just grab a polygon mask here and I'll just draw a little shape here for the top of her eye and we'll just kind of cut it with that, okay? So now we have this and maybe we'll even split out this eye glow into two different glows here. Let's just take this out. I'll take this green glow and copy and paste it and we'll split this into two sides like that. So now we have screen left glow and screen right glow. Those are different glows. So now we can combine this mask, with this mask, and actually I'm gonna put this mask above our eyelid mask and set our eyelid mask to subtract. That's going to start with our circle mask and then we're gonna subtract our eyelid mask like that. And I'll soften that edge a little bit. And this will work except for our eyelid mask isn't moving along with it. It's kind of cutting this off in a really unnatural way. So we need to move that around too. So let's grab our eyelid mask and go to center, right click, I'll go to tracker one path position. And that's gonna move that around a little bit, but I believe that I can take this mask and just move this into place, something like that. And that should follow that along. Sure does, looks pretty good. Okay, so we'll do the similar thing here is we'll take another polygon mask and we'll run this through that mask. Call this eyelid mask screen right. And we'll just cut this off like this. Set this to subtract, soften it a little bit. And again, we're gonna take this eyelid mask and connect our center to our tracker to tracker path position and then take our mask and move that back where it's supposed to be. That should work just fine. Now let's play this back and make sure everything looks good. And it's looking pretty good. And again, at this point, it's a matter of looking through this and seeing if there's anything that doesn't work or that you don't like and adjusting it accordingly. One thing I'll say is that I feel like this circle mask is just a little off. So we can take that down a touch. That'll probably be just fine for our fix here. Let's do this for the left as well. Let's just make this a little smaller, give us a little bit more wiggle room here and see how we like that. All right, looks pretty good. The only other thing I don't like is we have a little bit of the green glow here on this. So that's on our left mask. So we'll just make another polygon mask. We'll put that right in here and we'll cut this off like this. Put this on subtract, change our edge a little bit. And again, we will connect our center to our first path position, take this and move it down to be just where it's supposed to be. And now we shouldn't have any problems. Everything should look great. Once you've fixed all the little problems or so you think, it's good to kind of zoom in while you play it, make sure everything still looks good and you make sure you still like it. Looks pretty good to me. Now we have these kind of blazing green eyes. One thing that I like to do also before I call a shot done is I go up to these three dots here and go to gain gamma. And what this will do is change the gain and gamma of our preview here. It doesn't actually correct the image. It's just the preview of the image. And so if I push this gain up and push it down, Everything should act how you think it would act. Nothing should look weird, right? Same for gamma. If I push this up and down, the eyes shouldn't be like way too bright or way too dark. It should totally make sense for, you know, if this image was underexposed and crazy like that, that the eyes look reasonable, okay? And if you can kind of boost this up and down and it doesn't look totally weird, you're probably doing okay. If you do decide it looks weird, you can find a place where it does look weird. So I don't know, maybe maybe here when we have the gamma down, the gain up, maybe the screen is just a little intense. We can go back to this green glow color correction and maybe we could go to the settings and take the blend down a little bit and just kind of make that a little bit more tasteful. 0.583, same here, 0.583. And then when we reset this, this difference isn't going to be so intense. Maybe we want it really intense. But, you know, that's going to give us a little bit more realistic of a result where she has green eyes instead of, you know, blazing glowing eyes, which is what we had originally. Kind of depends on what you want. So again, before we call our shot done, let's keep it organized in case we need to go back to it later or even worse, if somebody else came to look at our shot and they're all confused about what's going on. I glow screen right. I glow screen left. I'll just color this green like that. And now we have a really easy to understand flow here and a great looking shot. So that's a nice little workflow for doing a visual effects shot in Fusion. I hope this has been helpful to you. If you want to learn more about how visual effects works in Fusion, we have a whole course on that, Pro Compositing and Visual Effects in Fusion. It's available now at groundcontrol.film, hosted by yours truly. It's a really good time. If you're looking, looking to make some cool stuff, well, that's a great way to do it. Yeah, thanks for being here with me a lot. The video is done now.